Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got 10 more very underrated folding knives that I think you might want to take a look at. Uh, I went back through my collection as I do sometimes and I looked through and I thought, there's definitely a bunch of knives in here that uh, I should be talking about that didn't really get talked about enough when they came out. Every knife I'm going to show you guys today is fairly new, uh, and they're also all available as until they're sold out, right? But as of right now, they are available. So I will link them right down in the description. You guys can check them out if you want. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's, of course, entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore complex. All right, starting off here with one that's not super duper expensive. I'm, I'm really shocked that the Real Steel Pathfinder is, is not talked about more often. Um, that's really the, the main criteria for this list is uh, that I, I just feel like, you know, these, these types of knives deserve a lot more discussion. This is a super nice knife. The interesting factor here is the grind is a, a Scandi grind. So it comes to a, essentially a zero edge and it is screaming sharp. We have an awesome crossbar lock. It's also a big knife, right? If you like larger folders, it's on the larger side for sure. Nice contoured green micarta in this case. There's a few different versions. 14C28N, a great pocket clip, awesome action. I mean, this is really an excellent knife. Um, I wish that the thumb studs were slightly more comfortable, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. Really, this is another Ivan B design, and I, I love the aesthetic of this. This knife will be great uh, as just a general EDC. I think it works better as like an outdoor everyday carry because it's on the larger side, but it's a strong lock, it's just a good overall knife. And honestly, I think 80 bucks is a good value for the incredible high quality that you get with this thing. Moving on here, a knife that everybody remembers, but nobody really talks about anymore, the Max Ace Peregrine. Oh my goodness, this is a wonderful, wonderful knife. And it's also a beautiful knife. Looks very similar to the Sabenza by Chris Reeve, of course. Um, but we have, a, it's, it's, it's a Max Ace, you know, aesthetic. We have San Mai, high polished ZDP 189 for the blade. That is beautiful. So we have cladding and then the core coming out right there that you can see. We have beautiful carbon fiber inlays. We have a titanium frame. We have a titanium pocket clip. Uh, we also have, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these knives run on phosphor bronze washers, which is really cool. There's just a lot of people out there who believe that after a certain price point, all knives should be on bearings. Like phosphor bronze is a sign of an inexpensive knife. You, you, what you hear is that much money and it's not even bearings. You can get knives that cost $30 with bearings. The internals for the pivot are not what dictates the price tag and are not exclusive to any particular price tag. We see nylon, phosphor bronze, and bearings on knives ranging from $20 to $20,000, believe it or not. The benefit to washers is um, it keeps debris out of the pivot. If you're going to go out and use it in a dusty, dirty environment, um, it keeps debris out of the pivot. Bearings, that would, you know, enough of it would gum it up. Uh, every now and then, you know, the, the downside is, is that we don't, uh, you know, when, when we're using phosphor bronze, the action isn't always as smooth as bearings or as smooth as some people would want the action to be when they're spending this much money on a knife. But knives like the Max Ace Peregrine kind of break people's expectations because it's very smooth and very easy to operate and manipulate. This is a beautiful knife, expensive at $274, but if you're familiar with this territory in the market, that's actually very, very competitive. So the Max Ace Peregrine is one that I very much love, and if you haven't checked it out, you absolutely should. Should, I, for, I forgot how to say the word should. Moving on here, uh, perhaps the best value on the list, that is the Artisan Cutlery Satyr. Uh, or Seder. I'm not sure how they want me to pronounce it. This is this was one of my favorite knives of 2023. And I'm I'm honestly flabbergasted that we don't see more discussion surrounding this knife. We have absolutely stunning milled titanium scales. We have a titanium frame lock, steel lock bar insert, titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip. This is all good stuff. The blade though, that's the star of the show. This is a fantastic example 
of Artisan Cutlery's Sand Wash, which is much better to look at than a belt satin finish. My goodness, am I sick of those finishes. Um, I also kind of like it more than a standard tumbled finish. It's high reflectivity. And on top of that, this is S90V, properly heat treated S90V. What does this knife come in at? Surely that's a doozy of an expensive knife. Wow, look at that action, man. 199 bucks. This is one of the best values on the market under 200, hands down. Coming from somebody, what gives you the authority to say that? As somebody who has over 4,000 uploads and uploads up almost 800 times a year now, I handle a lot of knives. Not everything, but I think it's safe to assume I handle more knives than the average person. I'm giving myself the authority to say this is one of the best value pocket knives on the market. Now, if you just hate frame locks or for some reason you hate S90V, right, or it's, you know, outside of your budget, that's perfectly fine. But, wow, what an incredible knife for sure. Moving on here, I think probably the reason that this one isn't talked about as much is because it is very expensive. But we we, we do need to point out the Riot Tiger. Um, it's been a while since Riot has done something. I mean, it's honestly been, without it being, you know, I guess this is still a collab, right? But Riot does, does like, you know, they, they produce things for other people and they, you know, do things here or there that are, that are really interesting to me. But it's been a while since Riot absolutely blew my face off with a design. And um, the Tiger was that design. Honestly, the last time I felt as enthusiastic about something that Riot produced um, was when they did the Jack 1.5. So that was that was a bit ago. These are contoured, diamond textured in this case, scales. This knife comes in a wide variety of different configurations. We have an inset liner lock, which I love. I love that because it doesn't matter where you put your fingers. You are not putting unnecessary pressure on that lock bar. So it's going to flip the same no matter what. And man, does it flip. That grind is absolutely aggressive. Now, it will be kind of a nightmare to resharpen with the recurve and the curved out here, right? But okay, people aren't buying this necessarily because they want the best dollar-for-dollar dollar utilitarian knife out there. They're buying this be partially because it looks cool. Now, you can obviously still care and use it. That doesn't mean that this is a non-functional knife. We have M390. Uh, we have titanium. We have zirconium accents in this case. They also make carbon fiber versions of this. They make different versions with different texturing in the titanium. Crane's Cutlery has a few different wild exclusive. There's a lot of wild stuff when it comes to this knife. This The base price of this knife is $377, right? A lot of times people, I think it's easy to point out, well, well part of the reason people don't talk about this stuff is because a lot of it's re really expensive. Okay, that's fair. Um, but also, even with that being the case, it still deserves more discussion. The design of this is so cool. In a knife world, in a 2024 knife world, where every other design is just a folding steak knife. Nothing against the pyrite, but holy moly, we got a lot of stuff like this. Everybody, every new designer on the market is essentially making this. That's fine if that's your favorite thing in the whole world, but holy moly, we've got it. Right, We've already got it. We've had it for a bit. I love the backspacer. I love the look of this. I love the ergonomics. That was a surprising thing to me. The ergonomic lines on this are so good. I love sitting here and flipping it. Love feeling the detents of it. God, the action on this thing is just wonderful. If you're shopping in this territory and you've maybe glazed over this knife and thought, eh, it's kind of cool. I don't know if this might be your favorite thing. This might be your favorite new knife in this uh, in this territory. It's really, really good. There's not a lot of knives from 350 to 400 that are incredibly exciting to me, but this is definitely one of them. Let's move on to a knife that is slightly less expensive, but uh, much, much larger. <laughs> this is a knife that I've talked about multiple times. The Migron Arma. What is so special about that knife? Number one. If you are a fan of overbuilt knives, and when I say overbuilt in this context, I mean knives with super duper thick materials just because it's fun, you will enjoy this. This is a quarter inch stock of M390 and then very thick titanium scales. Now the common theme with stuff like this, let me point out, beautiful texturing here, incredible flipping action for something that is so big and thick. Seriously, look at this detent. Oh, oh, that is to die for. If you're a detent snob like me, good Lord, you can reverse flick this thing. No double clutch, 
Fall shot action mainly because the blade is so thick. Flipping it is a dream. Oh, it is a magical rainbow cloud filling your mind and body with warm thoughts and feelings. <laughs> it's so good. People are going to have something to say about that. Um, but this uh, <laughs> this knife is so cool. If you like the uh, the big, thick, overbuilt stuff, this is probably one of the most EDCable. The other problem with, with big, overbuilt knives, I'm, I'm going to get to the second problem here, but one of the problems with big, overbuilt knives is that they're all almost too big to carry most of the time, right? For most people to justify. This is still very big and very heavy, but it is probably the most wieldy overbuilt knife on the market. It is also 100% the least expensive production overbuilt knife that exists. At $299, it's beating the majority of the competition by $100 or more. Seriously, find me another knife that is built exactly the same way, same dimensions, same materials for less money. You won't, right? There'll be one of those variables will be missing. This is phenomenal. If you like overbuilt knives, if you don't, well, then you'll probably think this is stupid. Um, but I do, and I also love the ergonomics. It's just a fun knife, man, and it's available. Moving on here, a knife that I think the reason this people stopped talking about this is because we knives released so many amazing things so quickly. And in some ways that can kind of work against you. Like if you get too good too quick, people forget about the stuff that stunned them, you know, the two weeks before you came out with the next thing. That's the we cybernetic. The only thing that I that I find slightly bothersome. It's not a deal breaker, slightly bothersome, is the fact that I can only deploy this knife with a front flipper. But that quickly goes out the window when you hold this thing and you realize this is this 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 was the knife for me where I went we didn't make this. I I I like Wii knives and I think they make really really good knives. I think they make very high quality knives, but this was different. It felt completely different. Like it was made by a completely different company in a completely different factory. Down to things like the finish, the complicated grind, the beautiful flowing lines on the titanium, the finish on the titanium, but also the action. Oh my gosh. I'm used to we being a little bit tight. Um, not in this case. This is such a cool knife. You can still find these floating around out there. I know people say, ah, that's, that's sold out. If you go, if you only check one retail, like if you go to Blade HQ right now, yes, this silver one is sold out. But if you use your brain and then you send a signal to your hands and you, you take your fingers and you put them on a keyboard and you type in the name of at least one other retailer, you might find it. So do me that favor. Don't go down in the comments and say, you said it was there and it's not. Look around. There's more than one retailer. This knife comes in at $297 base. There's a black one. There's a silver one. There's a few uh, other uh, variants out there. But you can find them. I looked. It took me 30 seconds. They're out there for sure. Um, let's go ahead and move on here. Why did he scream? That was alarming. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, this is a knife that uh, I know I, part of the reason it's not talked about is, is again because it's expensive, but wow, this is such a unique knife. The overall profile of the Cavill, uh, Kamasu is <laughs> bizarre, but it is actually ergonomically friendly and it's big enough. It, it almost looks like if you look in the pictures, it looks like a small knife, but it isn't. The overall length of this knife is almost eight and a half inches. It's got a three, wow. Uh, nearly a 3.75 inch um, blade and also 3.75 inch, wait, is that right? 3.75 inches of cutting edge. Yes, that is correct. We have M390, beautiful finishes, beautiful overall styling, nice action. This is a fantastic front flipper, but it's not just this. It's not just these details that make it super duper cool. Let me uh, see if I can demonstrate this real quick. I did finally find my uh, Citadel flashlight. There we go. Let's get that thing nice and nice and charged up. And then I'm going to show you guys something really, really cool. 
Yeah, I, you guys are like, oh, we get it. It's going to glow in the dark. Yeah, I, it's obviously going to glow in the dark. But just hold your horses, okay, for, for just one second. I want to show you something cool. Uh, a lot of people, I think, will like this. This is these inserts, and they're on both sides, by the way. These inserts are uh, glow-in-the-dark carbon fiber inserts. Um, and they look especially cool when you turn off the lights because they glow a magnificent blue. Look at this. Come on now. Come on. Especially if you're a watch guy and you get big into loom. This is so cool. This is unreal. I can't, I've never seen something glow like this uh, on a knife, right? It's usually green and it's usually that weird, goopy, Nickelodeon goop looking crap that, I don't know. This, this, uh, I gotta turn my flashlight back on so I can see. Um, but uh, yeah, this knife is, is awesome. Um, now it's a lot more expensive at 200, I'm sorry, $317, yes, but it does offer styling that we don't get in other territories of the Chinese production knife market. This is There's a little bit more here, right? So some people might be willing to pay the extra, especially if you're big into the glowing stuff, but really cool. Also, I love the decorative pivot. That's a big, uh, that's a big bonus to me there. Uh, big fan of that one. Moving on to something that is less expensive. Uh, you either love this knife or you hate it. And I feel like part of the reason that we don't hear about this knife as often is because a lot of people hate it. But I think it's cool. And it's one of the most interesting things that Civivi has ever made. The Civivi and GTC Hypersonic. That looks like, I've seen custom knives from a certain maker that look like that knife. That that seems like it might be a copy. It's not. It's literally a collaboration with GTC. That's who you're thinking of. That's why it says GTC on one side. Uh, GTC designs in general are designs that you either love or hate. They look very futuristic, very, you know, hard angles, and it's very, like, sharp geometry, right? Um, even people who like GTC designs, a lot of them say, yeah, that's the ugliest GTC I've ever seen. I think it's kind of cool. And you know what? I, I, I do kind of agree that it is a little bit ugly, even for a GTC. But what I like about it is it takes what Civivi usually does, which, I, you know, if, if you like the Elementum, that's fine. If you think the Elementum is like the greatest knife ever, that's perfectly fine. You can think whatever you want. But, oh, my God, is this boring. This is not boring. Um, this is really cool. It's a steel, fl uh, fl <laughs> I almost said flame lock, a steel frame lock. A flame lock would be cool. I don't know what that means, but it sounds fun. I'd like to see it. A steel frame lock with beautiful ergonomics. It's actually, despite looking hard and angular, it actually does have wonderful ergonomics. Very designy with the uh, G10 inlay here. A nice job on that too. I believe this is Nitro V. No, or is it? I'm sorry. No, that's wrong. It's 14C28N. <laughs> Civivi doing a great job keeping as much of that text off of the blade, but the, the steel bl uh, text is so small I can barely see it. Um, awesome. Uh, mill to steel pocket clip. Nice backspacer. Really good action. It's very easy to reverse flick because of the fuller there. Just a really cool knife. And this is one of those where you look at it and you go, pass. But then if you get a chance to handle it, because I looked at this originally when, when some of you sent me the sheet saying, what, which knives do you want to look at? And I looked at that and I was like, I don't know. And then I got it and I was like, wow, it's kind of cool. What would have helped this out is a taller blade. The blade height to handle height ratio is what throws it off aesthetically for a lot of people. But, you know, for 89 bucks, not bad. Pretty cool, honestly. I, I like this one. I think it's underrated. Moving on here, this is a knife that will be controversial for this list because people say that's not underrated. That's extremely popular. To me, underrated means... Not talked about enough. Even if it is popular, if it if I think it should be more popular than it is, then I can define it as underrated. Now, you can discuss down in the comments whether or not that makes any sense. That's fine. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and show you the, in my opinion, very underrated Flytanium Arcade. This is a uh, Demco and Flytanium collaboration. So it has the shark lock, right? Oh, Flytanium, but that means it's made in China, right? No. These are actually made in Taiwan. This is aluminum. G10 and S35VN with the Shark Lock. Um, I was blown away that this 
was not at least as popular as the Demco AD 20.5 when it released. That is a knife that I can't say is underrated at all. It's perfectly rated because it is as popular as we all assumed it would be. Um, but I thought the Arcade would be more popular. This was one of my favorite knives of 2023 as well. I really thought this knife would be substantially more popular because it is a much easier to look at Demco Shark Lock knife, right? The Demco Shark Lock is an awesome, like the, the 8020.5 is an awesome knife. But it's, for, for some people, it's kind of hard to look at. This looks like a, an animal that has been recently run over a little bit, right? The Arcade is much, much easier to look at. And it's very ergonomic, a little bit sharp edges down here, but not bad. Incredibly easy to manipulate. I love this. Love the pocket clip. Also, it comes with two sets of scales. Every Arcade you get, you get a, you get two different colors of scale, so you can flip those out or switch them out whenever you want. Also think the price tag is very fair. If you didn't know, it costs more to make things in Taiwan than it does China, right? So if we take this exact knife and we have it produced in China, it'll cost less. Exactly the same. It costs a little more to make things in Taiwan. That's just the case. But the quality is absolutely there, which is what makes it so impressive at $199. I think the value is absolutely here. Moving on here to the very last knife on the list. This is a wild one. Again, some people will love it. Some people will hate it. Probably that is what makes it a knife that people don't talk about as much as they should. And that is the CRKT and Hogue Redemption. What a cool knife. Technically, technically uh, a gravity knife. Now, I know you can operate pretty much any, you know, sort of... Um, Axis style knife, like here, let's use one with better action. Uh, you can operate any of these with like just the, um, I, I can't get it to fly out the same way. This knife is very good. This has very, very good action. It swings out no problem, right? Which is what you'd want from a knife like this. But this is made in the USA. Don't get confused by the CRKT. This is made by Hogue and it is apparent. Nothing against CRKT. Right, But I know a lot of people wince a little bit when they see that Columbia River knife and tool because it's kind of a dice roll. It might be good. It might be not. It's made by Hogue, so you can rest assured it is very, very high quality. Magna Cut blade. Very cool. Completely and totally symmetrical design. Awesome aluminum bolster look with the little shields in here. We have steel liners underneath. Beautiful G10. Incredible pocket clip, which can be mounted for... Uh, lefties or righties, right? Whatever you want. The top of the blade is not sharpened. Uh, I know a lot of people might want that, but here's the problem. It would be exposed right here and you would definitely cut yourself. So that's not a good idea. So we have one edge that is sharp and one that is not, but a really, really cool knife. An insanely cool knife. Now, a lot of people I think wanted a thumb stud and truthfully I did a little bit too, but this is, um, what I was saying about the gravity knife thing is because there's no other means of deployment, it might be kind of hard to argue against it, right? Now, you can bring your little knife book and your little knife glasses and you can say, look here, officer, look here, here's the law and here's how I interpret it. You can do that, but it's not going to matter. If you are in that situation and the uh, person who is deciding your fate decides that this is a gravity knife, which is much easier to do because the only means of deployment is this, meaning you need gravity in order for the thing to operate, or in, I guess inertia, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be much easier for them to say, no, that's a gravity knife. And yeah, so, you know, you'll be in there. It's not! I read the definition of gravity knife! <laughs> from the back, from, the, from behind the bars. <laughs> Yeah, so be careful is what I'm saying. Just be careful. Look up your local laws. Here in Kansas, this is okay. So, um, but it, it just depends. Um, I like the design. I like the aesthetic. It's a huge knife. The overall length of this thing, oh my goodness, is nine point, it's like nine and an eighth. Blade length is four inches. Big boy, big boy. Really cool. And uh, one of the best uh, deals on the list, in my opinion, at 225 Now, again, I don't want people to think I'm saying that that's inexpensive. It's not inexpensive. It's obviously a lot of money. But comparing apples to apples with its competition, meaning other USA-made knives, things that are made in the United States, it costs so much more money to make them. That's why I'm so impressed that they managed to put this together and, and you know, put a, a $225 price tag on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think very underrated. 
and a lot of fun. If you like how this looks and you don't mind the only means of deployment being the, in this case, I guess it would be Hogue's Able Lock. Um, if you don't mind that, you will love this. It is very, very cool. Guys, that's going to be it for uh, 10 underrated knives here at the beginning of 2024. Like I said, when I recorded this video, all of this stuff is available. So it will be available unless it sells out, which might be the case because other people are watching this video, clicking on the links and buying them. But uh, I will provide links for each of these knives individually down in the description. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.